your guys to, to kind of get out of town team bonding aspect wise? Um, you know, I talked about that to the team when we left. Um, I told them about the, the NBA bubble. Miami was in fifth place. And when I talked to anyone in the bubble, they said there were two teams that bonded unbelievably well. And the leadership on the team brought the team together from coffee to wine rooms to, and, and that was Miami and that was LA and look who was in the finals. So I said, use this time to be together, but it's hard because, you know, being in rooms together and all that, you know, so you try to have spaces where they can go together. But yeah, we talked about it. The team's coming together. The reason they are coming together is because they're playing for each other. Like you could say, well, why doesn't he shoot more? Or he, he does if he's making shots or if he's open. Or if you're not open, guess what? You can't shoot it. And they're playing for each other. Let me do my thing. I got to get mine. I got, well, we saw where that led us. And so now it's taken time, but they're becoming a team. But you, like the Super Bowl, I asked, I, how many of you came together and watched the Super Bowl together? I mean, all that stuff uh, these kids have missed out on. And, and, and it's, it's affected us, but, you know, I'm happy with the climb right now. I've been happy for three weeks. We just needed to break through and win a game. Um, but they, they're coming together as a team. They're figuring each other out. We're figuring them out. So we'll see from here. Tough game today, though, this team or tomorrow. They're very physical. A lot of fouls called early uh, because they came in with a physical presence. They were going to come in and, and be knock us into the cheerleaders and officials called fouls. So, you know, if it's that kind of game, my hope is it's the same way. You know, files are files, whether it's in Lex or in Knoxville. Coach, we have a visiting media person today, Alder from Empire Sports Media in New York. Go ahead, Alder. Hi, Coach. Uh, good morning. Coach, uh, I would like to ask two questions uh, about first. Uh, you've coached both Derek Rose and Emmanuel quickly. I would like to get your perspective on their fit with each other and Dero's being a mentor too quickly. Well, let me say this. Both, the, the similarities, both terrific people and terrific teammates. Derek Rose would have rather, he would never take a picture unless his teammates were with him. He didn't want this stuff by himself. Emmanuel's the same way. All the good stuff he's doing and how he's playing, you listen, he'll defer to his team. He's an unbelievable teammate. They're that way. They're different in that Emmanuel uh, was more of a shooting scorer. Both had great runners or floaters, both of them. Um, Derek wanted to pass first, at least when I got him. That's what he was. He passed first and then looked to score. Emmanuel's more of a scorer who can pass. So they're different in that way. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, both. You know, it's not one time I don't text them or talk to them where they won't say, love you, coach. I mean, they, these are great human beings, great young men. Coach, hey, Jerry, oh, go ahead. One more, Alder. Just one more. Uh, Juice rather playing at a different level this season. Uh, what's the impact of having Kenny Payne back in his corner and having Coach Tibbs as a coach? Yeah, and one of the things I told the Knicks when they were considering Kenny, I said, understand now, the guy, if you want to see what Julius can be, he's a good guy because they have a great relationship and Kenny will push him and push him and make him uncomfortable till he's comfortable being uncomfortable. It's, you know, how it's done. And, and, and I also told him Kevin Knox, who was playing really good early, um, you're going to find out what he is. Now, they're not playing him as much because they're trying to get other guys' minutes to try to figure out who's who. Uh, but I think... Uh, it's been great. I think um, Julius is having an all-star year. And in the Knicks, if they stay in this playoff hunt where they're in there, there's no reason uh, that, you know, Julius in the biggest market, averaging a double-double, just dragging team and motivating his team and doing what he's doing, there's no reason uh, for that not to happen for him personally. Jerry Tipton. 
Yeah, John, uh, uh, Isaiah has really filled up the box scores uh, in the last couple of games or so. And uh, I'm wondering about uh, the adjustment he's made maybe to the, the more physical play in, the, uh, in college and what sort of physical challenge does uh, Tennessee present for him? Well, they'll get into his body. Um, but what he's doing is he's making plays. Again, when you, I always say fall back on your training. You know, here are the shots you should be taking. Fall back on your training. There are times you had seen him drive and just throw the ball, and you're like, why would you do that? Well, that's not something we're teaching. Um, there were charges where he'd lower his shoulder and run people over. We're not teaching that. We're not trying. You can't. You don't have that kind of strength. So it takes time. But, um, you know, what he can do athletically with his length, um, you see that he shoots it better than everybody thinks he does. Part of that is if you're open, shoot the ball. If you're 0 for 10, that is on me because I left you in. Shoot the ball if you're open. And so now you're seeing him take open shots that he's comfortable that he can make. And he's not, you know, and even, even like I've said before, if they take a bad shot, I'm not really saying much. Because I don't want them to have any excuse. Well, I thought that may be a bad shot. You were wide open. It wasn't a no. There, no, if you're not making shots, get in that gym. Get and in that shot, gym and build your confidence. And shot blocking, John, how much of that is a knack and how much of it is a teachable thing? It's 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 more of a knack. It's a it's a twitch. Um, that again, you are not blocking it in his hand. So it takes a skill, um, a twitch that you let him release it and then you go get the ball. And I've had some of the best, and I'll tell you this, the, he, he's doing some good stuff. John Hale. Cal, how much direction have you gotten from the SEC on what the makeups are gonna look like? Do you still have hope that you're gonna get both makeups in and could you possibly even reschedule a game to replace Texas that last week? Um, we could, we could reschedule. Um, I don't think we only have one league game to make up. And I don't know. I imagine it would, it would probably be, you know, what, what I might do is if they're saying we're not making up that game based on seeding, they'll make it like South Carolina's missed a lot of games. So they can't play five games or four games in a week. So which games are the most important that they make up for the seeding? Whatever that is, if we're not one of them and we have a week, yes, I'd try to schedule a couple of games. As a matter of fact, I've had a couple of athletic director friends of mine who are at mid-majors that have said, hey, if you want to play us, let us know. So um, that's a possibility. Kent Spencer. John, the first time around against Tennessee, you kind of said their guards bullied your guards. This time around, is that a personal challenge? It, it, you know, do you challenge your guards, or is that something that has to be a total team effort to keep them, you know, out of the lane and away from that basket? Well, all they did when they got down ten is spread the court and went on the bounce. Um, so it's a combination. The guy who's guarding the ball. You can't let them straight line drive because we can't help you. You got to stay in front, but you can't get bullied. Uh, the the other guys were playing hopefully better team defense than we did at that point, but they're good. They scored fifty points, two players, fifty. Uh, the one thing of all the tape that I'm watching now, um, they're making threes too. So you can't just say collapse in the lane uh, because if they make a ton of threes, they're really hard to beat. But if two players are getting 50, they're hard to beat. They're a good team. That's why they're a highly ranked team. That's why they, uh, um, you know, there's predictions for them to advance. Rick's done a great job with his team. Very physical play. The, the biggest thing is we got to be ready for the fight. And, and you know, put ourselves, you got to play low to the floor. You can't just get pushed around. And if you're standing straight up and down, you will guards. You're going to get pushed off a of ball or off of screens. You got to be prepared for it. You got to be ready, and and it's a it's a man's game. But look, I'm I'm so proud of these guys, their attitude. We came here yesterday and practiced, and had a good practice, and there was no 
gnawing of the teeth. There were, they were excited to be in the gym again. So this team has withstood. And again, I, I say this, uh, the hard thing here, the whole experience here is creating habits in the summer, successful habits. In the fall, competitive, coming together, team building. Our fans, this is a fans, raving fans program. They haven't gotten to witness any of the good, any of the good. And some of the social media stuff, yeah, it hadn't been good, but our record hadn't been good. And people have a right to say what they want to say and, and have their opinions. So that, they've got none of the good. And so, and but, and we've lost, how many games down in the last minute? You would think that this team, no, nah, they didn't. And nor the staff, nor me. I'm having a ball because I'm adding stuff every game. And this is a smart team. I'm at, there were some things we did against Vandy that helped us win the game that were added two days before. And both defensively and offensively. So every game I'm walking in, looking at tweaking this, knowing the other guys watching. I'm having fun with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need daggers. Daggers from the free throw line. Daggers from the floor. And then you need somebody to do something like we tried to advance a loose ball. Then we fouled. We, our other guard didn't go in on a ball that bounced his way. Like that, we don't go get it. We turn it over versus the press. I mean, because guys aren't coming back. That's a dagger play. Come back and get it and get fouled and go make two. That's a dagger play. So we're still learning that, but it looks like we're getting different group guys now that accept what I'm saying. Here's what a dagger is. I'm not afraid to miss this shot. And if I miss it, give me another one. I'm going to make the next one. That's a dagger. Um, if I miss this, we're going to, you ain't making that one. Man, geez, I can't. Or you just run and you try to jump in a crack and hope no one looks at you. Don't throw it to me. Don't, you can't be that dagger. And it looks as though we got, you know, BJ made free throws. Uh, Olivier made free throws. Obviously, Davion and, and, and uh, uh, Devin made free throws. And again, we've had a couple games now. If we made free throws down the stretch, those are daggers too. And I showed them the made free throws and said, dagger, dagger, dagger. Yeah, they could be from the free throw line. How about you miss a front end one-on-one -on -one and they come down and make a three? Well, you stabbed us in the neck. That's the dagger. So, you know, they're getting better recognizing and knowing when they're in that moment. There's a moment in trying to teach them to don't be afraid of it. Go for it. All right. Last questions with Kyle Tucker. Yeah, Cal, when, when the record kind of gets ugly for a while, we, we tend to focus on what's wrong, what's going bad. Um, but you guys all season uh, have been one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. You've got a guy in Isaiah who's one of the better individual um, interior defenders in the country. Is that something Olivier, that, Olivier yeah, you, is that, something that you've, you've kind of held on to even, even as it was a struggle that, okay, we have one thing I know we do really well if we can – if we can maintain that, you know, and get some of this other stuff going, the well, offense well, you're, going, you're, then you have a chance. You're saying, Kyle, one part of defense. You're saying one part, which is shot blocking. What does shot blocking make them do? If they know there's somebody in there, they're, they're shooting mid-range shots, which are a lower percentage. You look at our field goal percentage defense, it's been pretty good. Um, for a team – with this kind of record, our defensive numbers are like, that's ridiculous. How will they have that kind of record? Well, if you watch the last two minutes of some of our games, you'd say, okay, I see. And so shot blocking is a part of it. Olivier and Keon also are blocking shots. I mean, those two are, those two are getting shots that, that are being blocked. So, but again, this thing, and I said it from day one, the fight you have, we have a couple guys on the team. Could you imagine if they had more fight in them to go get balls, to go on layups and make and ones instead of flips? Fight for that. I'm not trying to. Could you imagine a couple of these guys if we get them to fight? And now you not only have Isaiah fighting and other guys fighting, you have everybody fighting. 
That's what this becomes. But shot blocking is part of our defense. Yeah, and, when you say I, that, when, when you mentioned you know, what it, how it, not only when you block the shot, but how it affects how they approach you. I mean, does it all start for you with that, that you have this, this serious threat of, of sending it back the other way that affects how they, they have to approach you all the way around? We, we, we say they hear Casper. They hear ghosts. They know you drive in there. You don't know where the hell it's coming from, but Casper's in there. And, and so, you know, look, look, let me, let me just come back to, um, this has been uncharted waters for me, us, them, and they're fighting and doing everything they can for the program, for our state, for our fans. They haven't backed up one bit. And, for the fans who have been great to us and me personally, and I, I say it again, they've been great. Um, I understand that when your record's struggling, you're so, it, there'll be people that come out and have their opinions or, you know, didn't haven't had a chance to really say anything for 11 years to come out. I'm fine with all that. It doesn't bother me. But I'll say this. Our fans are what this program's about and how they've been to me through this and how they've been to this team through this unbelievable. And, you know, like none of us are used to this. None of us are used to this pandemic either. And none of us are used to all that's gone on late where we're still teaching and still learning. And that's this experience. But like I said, tough game tomorrow afternoon. Ooh. But you know what? Let's go. Let's see where we are. Let's keep learning about each other. Let's see what we have to do to keep this climb going, because that's what it is. It's about this climb. Thanks.